Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on a summary of social engineering attacks. Today we're going to be discussing what makes social engineering effective, and then we're going to conclude by discussing some types of social engineering attacks. I have a lot of information to give you, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will start by talking about what makes social engineering effective. The largest vulnerability in any system tends to be the people who have authorized access to the system itself. Hackers often attempt to exploit this weakness in the system by applying social pressure to the people who have access to that system. It has been proven to be an effective means of breaching data security for many years as it relies upon some well-known exploitation principles. In actuality, social engineering doesn't require very much technology in order to be effective, as you will find out later in this presentation. How effective is social engineering? Even the National Security Administration, the NSA, has proven to be vulnerable to social engineering attacks. It was the main method used by Edward Snowden to gain the illicit data that he took from the organization that he's been slowly divulging to the rest of the world. So what are the reasons for the effectiveness of social engineering? Well, the attacker may rely on authority. The hacker impersonates an authority figure. The victim believes that he or she must comply with that authority. The impersonation can occur through email, over the phone, or even in person if the hacker is really good. Then there's intimidation. The attacker uses a message that intimidates the victim. Therefore, due to fear, the victim succumbs to the pressure and compromises the system. The hacker may rely upon consensus or social proof. The hacker presents some known facts as proof that he or she is telling the truth. The victim ends up trusting the attacker based on the social proof or consensus. Then there is scarcity. The attacker persuades the victim that what is being offered is highly valued due to its scarcity. The target falls victim to human nature, which is usually greed. An example of this is the Nigerian Prince scam that I'm sure all of us are familiar with. Then there's urgency. The hacker imparts a sense of situational urgency. The victim feels like he or she has to act now to fix a situation. The message delivered to the victim may arrive via the telephone or email, but it always implies that action is required now in order to avert disaster. The hacker may rely upon familiarity or liking. The attacker either uses a friendly tone or inserts herself or himself into the workplace. The victims tend to like the attacker or feel that they can trust the attacker. This is one of the main methods that Edward Snowden used to gain access to the information that he took from the NSA. He actually acquired it from co-workers who felt that they could trust him which moves us on to the last reason for effectiveness, and that's trust. The hacker exploits our human nature to trust, either by appearing to need the victim's help or by offering to help the victim. By appearing to be the victim of an unfortunate situation, the attacker fools the victim into succumbing to the attack, or the hacker may create a situation in which the victim appears to need the attacker's help, at which point the victim gets exploited. With that done, let's move on to types of social engineering attacks. First up is impersonation. Many social engineering attacks begin with the hacker using impersonation, the act of pretending to be somebody else. A common impersonation technique is where the attacker impersonates someone of perceived authority causing the victim to feel as if he or she must comply. The attacker may impersonate someone who requires help. For example, the attacker pretends to be an end user who requires the assistance of a network administrator, getting them to reset the username and password to something that the hacker can use and therefore giving the attacker unintended access to the network. There are many more examples of impersonation. Then there's phishing. 
the attacker typically casts out a broad net of emails that appear to be from a trusted source, as in from a well-known bank or from a company like Google or Microsoft. The email will request that the user click on a hyperlink. The hyperlink connects to a malicious website that then asks the user to input his or her credentials. Once the user does that, the attacker then steals the user's valid credentials so that they can use them for fraudulent purposes. The phishing attack may employ the principle of authority and urgency in order to get the victim to respond. Whaling is very similar to a phishing attack. However, instead of casting a wide net in order to get a few responses, the hacker targets a whale or a big fish. This is somebody with a lot to lose. The hacker specifically crafts the message to suit the victim's situation. The usual target of whaling is someone at the executive level of an organization. Vishing is a phishing attack that is conducted over the telephone, so it's voice phishing. Hoaxes are also a form of social engineering attack. It employs the principle of consensus or social proof in order to get the victim to perform an action. Most hoaxes are not targeted to a specific person or organization, but are crafted in order to cause widespread disruption. Often a hoax is further spread by users who don't realize that it is a hoax. Then there's shoulder surfing. It's a type of social engineering attack that relies upon the hacker being able to see the victim's screen or keyboard. The hacker tries to steal confidential information, often as in username and passwords, by watching the victim's actions and recording their keystrokes. Dumpster diving can also be used as a social engineering attack. The attacker goes through the trash of a person or organization in an effort to discover sensitive information. People often think that shredding is an effective means of preventing dumpster diving, but that all depends upon the type of shredder that is used. A cross-cut shredder is more effective than a strip-cut shredder. Strip-cut shredded material can actually be pieced back together. It's time-consuming, but it can be done. And finally, there's tailgating. This is a social engineering attack that is usually used to bypass physical security. The attacker waits or times the approach to a secure area in order to enter right behind an authorized person. The victim of a tailgate attack may actually hold the door open for the attacker, not realizing that they've just been socially engineered. That concludes this session on a summary of social engineering attacks. I began by talking about what makes social engineering effective, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on types of social engineering attacks. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.